I just thank God for all these things. And for such a, for such a time as this. That's right. Because this is a celebration. Yeah. And people have to realize that Jesus is the one that's suffering. He suffered for all of us. Right. Because he's going to be, we're going we're gonna to be ready when he comes. That's right. Amen. I'm going to be reading with, for you, coming from Luke chapter 23. Verses 39 to 43. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Dost thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into my kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Praise God. You know, I think about the seven sayings, and um, they're all about giving us lessons on life. And uh, this one in particular is about the principle of salvation and how faith is rewarded with promise. And uh, you got the thief on the left and the thief on the right. One was repenting, and one was still mocking him. And my subject is, what can we learn from the thief on the cross? At this time, the crowd of religious leaders, they were scoffing and mocking Jesus. He had just been placed on the cross. He was hung between two thieves. Well, evidently, one of the thieves had, apparently had a change of heart. Because like the other, both began their time on a cross by mocking them and blaspheming them, and along with their spectators. But one of the thieves responded to the message of salvation that day, Amen. and was taken to paradise that day. If you think about it, this thief had more faith than all the disciples put together. Because if you think about how Judas, the one that took the, the silver, he was known as the, as the common, common thief. So he, it's no surprise he would sell his soul for 30 pieces of silver. But ultimately, he took his own life, so he betrayed Jesus. And then there was old Peter. He said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you. I'm going to love you till, till the end. But what did he do? He denied Jesus three times. So if there's a, if there's a saying that so when the going gets tough, the tough get going, but guess what? Looks like the disciples they didn't, they didn't get going after all. They hid. But that's how we are. When Sometimes we, we think about, God, Lord, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but, uh, but you have to trust in God. Yes. Because that's why Jesus died on the cross, because if we have to suffer like him, and the Bible says, if you, if you, if you, if you, Bob says, if you, don't, if you can't suffer with me, you won't reign with me. Right. Right. So we have to be able to take the suffering. So Peter denied him three times. So he said, he knew, and then when he, when he said he knew not Jesus three times, then he finally realized that he made a mistake. So you have to think about it. You have to be willing to be forgiven. The question is, again, what can we learn from the thief on the cross? When seeking what we can learn from the thief on the cross, it should be remembered that at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, there were two thieves, one on the right, one on the left. It is remarkable that while in excruciating and mind-numbling torment of the cross, the Son of Man had the heart and mind and will to pray for others. Yet it is a miracle that one thief, while agony in himself, heard the Spirit of God call him to repentance. And acceptance of the forgiveness of God was just about to provide through the death of Christ. While the disciples were abandoning him, this Lord answered the call and his sins were forgiven. 
including his blasphemy against God. And if you read your Bible, it's coming from Luke chapter 5, verses 31 to 32. That the other thief rejected Jesus is remarkable in his own right. While being tortured on the cross, he literally joined his tortures insulting the Savior of the, of the world. And he most likely did so because he wanted his tormentors to think he was just like them. But not only was this man was next to the Savior, he heard him pray. He witnessed to the, the salvation of the other thief. He saw the world go dark. And, he can, and, and only one can save him, but his pride kept him from submitting to the only one who was willing to save him. And when one day, when one, when one, and, when, and, when, and he one day bows to the name, he mocked, he'll be doing so reluctantly while in torment. Philippians 2 and 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and in earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, that one day everyone in the universe will submit to him. That's, that's what he said. Praise the Lord. And what we can learn from the saved thief on the cross is that we're all sinners. We're in our need of saving. And no matter what sins, a number of sins we have in our life, or if, the, or if, or if we in the world think our sins are minor or extreme, there is no such thing as <coughs> little sin and big sin. It's all sin. It is never too late to repent and accept the free gift of salvation. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9 says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Moreover, as long as someone still has a mind and a will to choose life over death, it is never too late to proclaim the gospel, which hopefully will open a heart to a miracle by the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen.